Tonight, an exclusive report on the massive global children's website, Habbo Hotel, that has become a mecca for paedophiles. <music> a children's website accessed by a quarter of a billion users globally. Even the experts feel a sense of moral panic at what goes on there. If I was the parent of an 11-year-old girl on a chat room like this, I'd want there to be a moral panic. What I've just seen makes me think this is a dangerous place for youngsters to be. Good evening. It is every parent's terror that their internet literate child will arrive in a make-believe children's web world that is so unsafe that he or she can be propositioned for sex by a paedophile within four minutes. Tonight, we reveal that in more than 50 visits to the kids' site Habbo Hotel, posing as an 11-year-old girl, we were propositioned every time. As a result of our discoveries, a major investor has already removed his 13% holding in the company. It boasts over 250 million users in more than 150 countries. 300,000 of the youngsters who access it are here in Britain. Now Channel 4 News can reveal that the children's online gaming site Habbo Hotel is inhabited by paedophiles. It amounts, says one critic, to a children's brothel. Investigating the site over a period of months, this programme has discovered that users, some as young as nine, are bombarded by explicit chat and regularly propositioned to strip and perform sexual acts on webcams. Following our revelations, one of the company's biggest multi-million pound investors has pulled out. And be warned, Porrig O'Brien's report contains sexually explicit and offensive language. You probably haven't heard of Habbo Hotel. Your kids probably have, though. Chances are they're some of the 250 million members of the site around the world. It's a global gathering place, basically, where young teenagers go to chat and make friends. Channel 4 News asked two of the world's biggest names in online safety to go in and play the game. This is completely wrong. This should not be happening. Any parent who sees this <laughs> will make sure their kids are not going on Habbo Hotel. They adopted the cutesy cartoon personas just like children do. They heard and saw things there just like children do. It was unbelievable, honestly. And it was just, it was like, I just couldn't believe what I saw. According to its owners, it's the largest online community for teenagers in the world. There are nearly 300,000 users in the UK, and it makes millions for its owners, a Finnish company called Sulaki. It's a giant internet chat room, basically. You can adopt a persona or avatar and wander around from room to room talking to other avatars. You can create your own room. How does the company make its money? You can purchase furniture to put in your room. Habbo gaming cards are available to buy for a tenner in WH Smith's and Tesco's. The card gives you credit to spend on the site. It has bright lights, teddy bears, balloons, and it has extreme violent sexual chat. It was people saying that they were going to do things to other people or to themselves. Our producer spent two months playing the game. She described herself on the site as an 11-year-old. This was her first exchange. People were having sex with me without my permission or, you know, doing things to me without my permission. So both in public, you know, men would come up to me and say that they were doing all these sorts of things to me in my body without me asking, but... So the little avatar would walk up to your avatar and yeah, say... and say, hello, I'm grabbing your breasts, I'm doing this to you, I'm having sex with you and now I'm leaving you. We can't broadcast the more violent sexual chat. Within minutes of that first exchange, Rachel was being asked to check out of Habbo Hotel and make direct one-to-one -one contact. Initially, do you have a webcam? Are you on MSN? Are you on Skype? I was being asked to strip, to get fully naked. What would I do on a webcam? Would I send photos of myself over email? She played the game 50 times in total. This was her experience every time. So, John, I'm going to log in to Habbo Hotel. Mm -hmm. My turn. I was joined by John Carr, though. He advises the UK government and the European Union on online safety. 
For both of us, it was our first time on the site. In we go. Go get new friends. Friend request from Dirty Boy. Let's see what he's got to say. Can I ask you what your body's like? Yeah. Well, a moderator should be jumping in about now because that's, it's not hard to see which way this is going. The game says you have to be 13 to play, but younger children have told us they use it too. So for the purposes of this, we'll, we'll say that I'm 11, okay? Now this is worrying, this next message, because he says, do you want to chat on MSN or Skype? 11 year old, MSN, Skype, dirty boy. You don't need to be Einstein to work out what this is about. There should be the equivalent of the virtual fire brigade jumping in on this, and it's not happening. And then he immediately comes back, you like older guys, question mark. This is completely wrong. This should not be happening. Are we in danger, though, of whipping up something of a sort of moral panic about this sort of thing? If I was the parent of an 11-year-old girl on a chat room like this, I'd want there to be a moral panic. What I've just seen makes me think this is a dangerous place for youngsters to be. Five rules for teen product. The chief executive of Sulaki, the company that owns the website, disagrees. This is Paul Fontaine addressing a conference entitled Engaging Teenagers. He wouldn't be interviewed, but sent us a statement. Any online community that allows users to assume virtual identities may be open to abuses, which is why we work hard to keep users safe, filtering content and blocking inappropriate users, tracking some 70 million lines of conversation globally every day on a 24-7 basis. He went on to say that they discourage users from moving off the site onto Skype and MSN. Maybe the inappropriate chat we came across is just young teenage fantasists getting cheap kicks. But maybe it's not. Matthew Leonard pretended to be a teenager. He befriended a girl on Habbo Hotel. He said he'd buy her furniture. Matthew Leonard was, in fact, in his early 20s. The two then spoke on MSN, and that then led further that he asked her to um, show herself naked via webcam. Um, which the girl did. He captured images of that, which he later used um, to get the girl to commit further sexual acts for him via webcam. Um, following Matthew Leonard's arrest for that offence, it transpired that the girl was not the only uh, child victim. We traced over 80 um, victims. The youngest was 10 and the eldest was 14. He was sentenced to seven years. Then there was Alex Nicholson, recently jailed for two years after sex offences against boys he met on Habbo Hotel. That's two convicted paedophiles, 82 children. And it all started on Habbo Hotel. No one wants the whole virtual world regulated. That said, as a society, we expect environments that children play in to be safe. To that end, the industry, with the help of the Home Office, produced this document. It's a safety standard, basically, for children online. And in it, the industry agrees to do everything practicable to make children's websites safe. In other words, whatever systems you put in place to moderate your site, it has to work. Ex-employees of the company have told us that they've outsourced the moderation team abroad and that the financial squeezes on to make sure they process call for help reports quickly. Mechanics aside, is moderation at Habbo working? According to one of the biggest names in online moderation, no. Rebecca Newton is in charge of online safety at the giant children's game Moshi Monsters. It's for much younger children and is not in direct competition with Habbo Hotel. We asked her to go in. It was like a giant room full of people, kids, who knows how old, having cyber sex. It was unbelievable. It was unbelievable, honestly. Had, it was just, it was like, I just couldn't believe what I saw. And this coming from someone who has seen a I've lot. I've seen a lot. I've seen, I, you wouldn't believe some of the things I've seen. But I'd never seen that before, just whole rooms. It was just like this giant brothel. Like, what does that say to you? Uh, that says to me that nobody's minding the children. Nobody's watching the shop. Today, what's happening on this company's website went all real world. 
As a result of our investigation, one of the website's biggest investors decided to check out of Habbo Hotel. Parikh Bran reporting, and he's with me now. Parikh, uh, you've visited the site all day. What's going on? Well, to be honest, it's just another day on Habbo Hotel. What you can see here behind us is what we filmed from the site just before we came to air. And it is so graphic, we can't show you it, basically. And this is typical. What really struck me was that within minutes of going onto this site, you were really bombarded with this thing. It happened virtually instantly. And uh, what, what is the company that owns Habbo Hotel saying? Well, Sulaki's reaction to our investigation has, shall we say, evolved over the last few days. It started quite routine a few days ago, and then we got this quite uh, personal outpouring, basically, from the chief executive. He says, I was incredibly concerned to see this report and to hear about the findings of the Channel 4 News investigation. As a parent, I understand the critical importance of making sure teenagers and young people have a safe online experience. I was sorry to hear of Balderton's decision to withdraw its involvement. That's the investor. We'll come to that in a moment but my priority right now is to address the issues raised by the investigation. Since hearing about the report, I've asked my team to tighten security across the site and to strengthen the user rules. Well, now, you mentioned the investor pulling out, and it's a multi-million pound investment. What do you know about that? Well, well today we found out that Balderton Capital, which is a huge investment house, withdrew a 13% stake in Sulaki. On Thursday night, the board of Sulaki met and Balderton have a seat on that board. And the letter detailing what we have found out in our investigation was discussed at that board meeting. An insider told us that, it, that, that the investor considered that Sulaki weren't taking the allegations seriously enough, therefore pulled the money. Now that's significant because as far as we understand this is the first time that that has happened in the corporate world to do with issues around children's safety online and I suppose previously it was the preserve of the police children's safety online or government departments or concerned mums and dads gathered around school gates but now it has gone off like a nuclear bomb in the boardroom, hitting a company, a huge company, where it really hurts in its pocket. Parik O'Brien. Now, if that has left you worried about your child's safety on the internet, John Carr, the web safety advisor you saw in the report, is available now to answer your questions. You can talk to him via the Channel 4 News Facebook page, which you can find via our website at channel4.com forward slash news. We're back now to our main report tonight. A Channel 4 News investigation into the children's website Habbo Hotel has revealed thousands of examples of pornographic conversations. The website has more than 250 million users worldwide and provides a virtual world for children. Our producer visited the site over an eight-week period, posing as an 11-year-old. What she discovered some viewers may find shocking. People were having sex with me without my permission or, you know, doing things to me without my permission. So both in public, you know, men would come up to me and say that they were doing all these sorts of things to me in my body without me asking, but... So the little avatar would walk up to your avatar and yeah, say... and say, hello, I'm grabbing your breasts, I'm doing this to you, I'm having sex with you, and now I'm leaving you. Well, we also took a leading expert in online child safety onto the site. If I was the parent of an 11-year-old girl on a chat room like this, I'd want there to be a moral panic. What I've just seen makes me think this is a dangerous place for youngsters to be. Following our investigation, a major European investor, Balderton, has dumped its 13% multi-million pound stake in the website's owner, the Finnish company, Sulaki. Well, a little earlier, I spoke to the former chief executive of the Child Exploitation and Online Protection Centre, SEOP, Jim Gamble. And I began by asking him why nothing had been done about it. Well, Habba Hotel, like so many other social networking sites, is in essence a legitimate site where many, many people go and spend their time legitimately. Unfortunately, like any public place uh, where the children frequent, um, some people are going to go who are not scrupulous. The, the paedophile, the pervert, is going to use the cover that it will provide to get into that environment. Now, the issue for me has always been 
um, how do you police those environments sensibly and sensitively, but most of all effectively, uh, not whether you close them down or not. Well, let, let so me just Habba stop you there, because what, Habba, what the people are saying who run the Habba Hotel uh, is that they are policing it properly, that they do cooperate with the police. Well, you know, reporting something to the police in the aftermath is one thing, but if they have the number of moderators, human moderators, uh, that your press release earlier today indicated that they say they have, then if they're in that environment, I don't know why they're not picking this up. Well, the chief executive says he plays in Harbour Hotel. Um, do you think it's possible to visit without becoming aware of what you call inappropriate adult behaviour? Well, I mean, I don't. Now, if you're going to create a public space online, if you're going to allow people to dress up and pre pretend to be other than who they are and have a virtual reality, then you need to provide virtual policing, virtual moderators, people out there who can immediately spot those who are uh, there with criminal intent or malicious intent and have them removed and banned from the site. So, is this a one-off or is it a much bigger problem than one? Well... I'm talking about Habba Hotel at the minute. I mean, we all often talk about Facebook and Google, and I think they've come on such a long way. We see far greater levels of moderation. We see far greater a far greater ability for people to differentiate between who they share what with. You're talking about a different environment when you go into the avatar world, where people really do put on a suit, pretend to be someone other than who they are, and when you look at them, you cannot tell. And you are engaged in conversation. So what you're doing is you're mixing kids in that environment. Now, they will say, well, children below the age of 13 aren't allowed to go in. Well, I would say that a child of 13 shouldn't be able to go into an environment where you have a hotel with bedrooms that people go and lie down on the bed and then go and talk to other people. So there needs to be a sensible differentiation because there are many, many good social media, social networking sites out there. This one, if properly moderated, is probably a good site. But the way it's working at the minute, given what we know has happened, given that you have had an undercover investigator on there who has had a very unhappy experience, the fact that we've gone on today in the aftermath of the media that's gone around that and you're still able to witness this type of behaviour. I was engaged but, by someone who said they were a helper and when I asked were they a member of staff or a volunteer, they said they were a volunteer. Well, how are they trained? You know, how is that moderated? Who moderates them? Jim Gamble talking to us earlier, and just a reminder that if you're worried about your child's safety on the internet, John Carr, a web safety advisor, is available now to answer your questions. You can talk to him on the Channel 4 News Facebook page, which you can find via our website at channel4.com forward slash news. Tonight's main news, the programme has revealed that Habbo Hotel Online gaming site for teenagers is exposing children to the threat of paedophiles. Don't forget, you can reach us both on Twitter. There's been a massive conversation about Habbo Hotel on Twitter throughout the programme, uh, and there's much more online on the website, channel4.com forward slash news. Well, we're back tomorrow at 7 o'clock. Until then, from Krishnan and from me, that's Channel 4 News. Good evening.